Welcome back. You're listening to Cross the Border. That's the name of this broadcast. My name is Nicholas. We've been uh, continuing our study here in Ecclesiastes. A quick run to uh, for the break there. Just didn't last long enough. All right, let's pick up back here. We're in, well, we've got to chapter 10 and verse 1. That's where my bookmark is. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Don't let it slip. You can do a lot of good in your life. You can be a great example to your children by learning obedience to your children, your grandchildren, and all of those that are around you. But a little folly can do a lot of damage. It sure can uh, raise a stink, as the uh, preacher says here. So a little folly can do a lot of damage to him who is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's is at his left. Yes, also, when he that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom faileth him, and he saith to every one that he is a fool. Of course, we live in a, a predominantly right-handed world, and so the illustration here is that the right-handed man, or the wise man's heart, is at his right hand. He knows how to handle things. It's not clumsy for him. He uses wisdom. He's the wise man. But a fool will go through life clumsily, not doing his best, not handling things properly. But, you know, and you would do the opposite if you're left-handed. Okay, yes, uh, if the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifieth great offenses. There's wisdom there. And being led by the spirit, you'll know when it's time to flee. But in most cases, it's not time to flee. Uh, for the illustration of, uh, you see the policeman in your rear view mirror flashing his lights. The policy enforcer out there on the road. Uh, you don't flee. That would be foolish. Um, you could get yourself shot. So that's probably the best illustration to illustrate what uh, the preacher is saying here. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, don't leave your place. Yield. For yielding pacifieth great offenses. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceedeth from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. Yes, folly is set in great dignity. It's, uh, you know, when you watch, like, you see the Pope. Yes, that brings to mind, folly is set in great dignity. And, uh, you know, kissing little wafers and bearing little statutes, little dolls of the Queen of Heaven. What? It's folly, but they set it in great dignity. They'll take a, the, the doll of the Queen of Heaven and put it in a case and adorn it with gold. And everybody's dressed up in all these fancy robes of, you know, purple and scarlet and white and whatever. And they parade it through the street. And you look on this spectacle and you go, folly is set in great dignity. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Yes, be wary, whatever you're doing. If you dig a pit, you can fall into it. I believe this is to be taken both figuratively and uh, and literally in many of these. A lot of people dig figurative pits. I've had people dig pits for me, digging pits for me right now. And I'm watching them fall into them. Yes, I, I thank the Almighty for his protection, that he has put a hedge around me. Ah, hey, there we go. A hedge. Whoso breaketh a hedge... A serpent shall bite him. Yes, it makes me think of that hedge of thorns, that hedge of protection. 
that the Almighty has put around me. And those that are trying to break that hedge, because they're there. There are people trying to break that hedge down. So what does that mean? A serpent shall bite them. Oh, hey, that gets, that's, that gets pretty deep. Because we all know who the serpent is. It is Satan bites them. So the Almighty, I mean, I'm so grateful for the hedge of protection that the Almighty has put around me because I see the serpent biting them that are trying to break it down. Yeah, they're controlled by Satan. And how do I know that? Because they continually break his law to try to hurt me, to break down that hedge of protection. Yes, they are owned by Satan, demon-possessed or at least controlled by demons. At least there's a demonic influence there, if not total control of their lives. Yes, when you break God's law and you do it knowingly and willingly, you have given your life over to the evil one. When you do it to hate your neighbor without a cause, uh, you th think you have a cause, but if your cause is not lawful, you know, then you don't have a cause. You're doing it without a lawful cause, then you have given yourself totally over. You have been bitten by the serpent for trying to break the hedge of protection that the Almighty has put around me and his servants. And everyone that serves the Almighty, they know about this. Because when you're serving the Almighty and you're hitting home and you're, you're hitting hard against the devil, against the enemy, they come at you. He sends his demons in and his demons have control of certain people and he drives them through hatred, envy, whatever. And they come at you and they try to tear you down. But let's say, let the serpent come out of that hedge and bite them. You know, if they don't repent, let them be turned over to Satan, the serpent, for the destruction of the flesh. So I, I do pray that my enemies repent. I do. You know, that's, that's the good thing. That's, try, that's where I try to overcome evil with good. I don't repay evil for evil, but I try to overcome evil with good. I pray for my enemies. And th even though I realize that it is unlikely because simply because it is unlikely that most people will repent. The unfortunate fact of this life is that most people will choose to pay the price for their own sins. Many in pride, I don't need a savior. I don't need a crutch. I don't need that crutch of religion. I'll stand on my own. I don't need a savior. They say stuff like that. Or, and that's deception, of course, because what they really are saying is, I love my sin too much. I don't want to give up the pleasure of sin, whatever their sin is, the love of money, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, you know, all those things, greed, envy, whatever is driving them. They don't want to give it up, so they pay the price for their own sins. Bad plan. Paying the price for your own sins is a bad plan. See, because the wages of sin is death. And the problem with paying the price for your own sins is that you cannot escape death. That's why you do need a Redeemer. You do need a Savior. Because if He pays the price for your sins, you get to escape death. That's the plan. That's what He has for you. Oh, watching some foolish atheists. I mean, they're really getting bold, those atheists. And they go, well, tell me something, you know, don't, don't try to... Don't, well, here, I'll tell you something. All you atheists out there, here, you can verify this for yourself. You shall surely die. That's the truth. That's all the truth you need. You shall surely die. Now, how are you going to escape death, atheists? <laughs> you spend your life saying, oh... I don't believe in God, and your whole life is denying something that you don't believe in. What foolishness, what folly, what vanity, who are you kidding? You're certainly not kidding me. You're certainly not kidding the Almighty. You're just kidding yourself and whoever else you can delude, who you can talk into your delusion. You shall surely die. That's all there is to it. Now, how are you going to escape that? Oh, you think, well, that'll be fine. 
I'll just die and I'll be dirt and, and I'll remember nothing anymore forever. Sorry, there is that second resurrection where you're going to stand before the judge of the universe and you're going to give an account to him and you're going to be judged by all the things that you did in this life, including the rejection of the work and the offer of eternal life, the escape plan that you neglected to take for whatever reason that you deluded yourself into thinking there is no God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God and you shall surely God die and you will meet the God that you deny. So if any atheist happens to hear this, well, they've been preached to once more, but I don't have time to pursue those foolish atheists out there that are self deluded. The fact is they love sin. So they've allowed themselves to be deluded. Whoso removeth stones shall be hurt therewith. And he that cleaveth wood shall be endangered thereby. Yes, pay attention to what you're doing. Don't walk through life as a fool. You know, if you're, if you're chopping wood, you know, protect your eyes. You could still be endangered. You know, uh, take, be cautious. Go through life with your eyes open. Act wisely. Whoso removeth stones shall be hurt with, therewith. Well, if you're wise, you're not going to be hurt with those stones, but it could happen. If the iron be blunt and he do not wet the edge, then he must put more strength, put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. So whatever you do, that's the lesson here. That's what the preacher is saying. These words of wisdom is that wisdom is profitable to direct all things, you know, to sharpen the edge of the ax so that you won't have to work twice as hard. And you know, that, that can be applied to everything you do. Surely the serpent will bite without enchantment and a babbler is no better. The words of the wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. Again, I see this demonstrated by the fools that lie continually. Their lies swallow themselves up eventually. And they get bit by the serpent trying to break the hedge of protection. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. As we're talking about the lips of a fool shall swallow up himself. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. And the end of his talk is mischievous madness. A fool also is full of words. A man cannot tell what shall be and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them because he knoweth not <clears throat> how to go to the city. Yes, he doesn't follow instruction. He doesn't seek out instruction what he does. He or she. <laughs> Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child and thy princes eat in the morning. <clears throat> Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles and thy prince princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness. And that's how I, <clears throat> I live my life that way. I don't eat just to eat. Some people, they just, they have to eat. It doesn't matter whether they're working, whether they need the strength or not. And I see them when they get, you know, 30 years old, they eat like they're a teenager and they get fatter. Then they get 40 years old and they have to get up and have that big breakfast every day. They don't reduce their diet realizing that their metabolism has changed and they get bigger still and they're not eating for strength. Me, I eat for strength. I ate very little this morning and I ate for strength knowing that if I didn't eat that little that I did eat before I went on the air, because talking for two hours just, that uses up, burns up quite a bit of energy. And I know that I could, I would faint or begin to feel faint if I don't eat a little. But if I wasn't going to do this work or other labor, then I wouldn't eat at all. I would wait until, you know, noon to eat. I would fast 
in the morning. I would not break my fast. That's what breakfast is. I would not break my fast until later in the day. And usually that's what I'll do if I'm not going to work, if I'm not going to get on this broadcast. And I only eat enough for strength. I don't want to eat too much. There is wisdom there. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season for strength and not for drunkenness, not just for the pleasure of eating or just because their appetite demands it. By much slothfulness the building decayeth. And, you know, the, the building of our life through much slothfulness decayeth. Pay attention to what you're doing. Pay attention to your body. Pay attention to your eating habits. Pay attention to your exercise habits. Don't let your building decay through slothfulness. Get up and go for a walk. Make sure you get a little exercise every day. This applies just not just to the building of the house that you live in and maintaining that. There's wisdom there, but maintaining the tent the building that you occupy, that your spirit and your soul occupies through much slothfulness. Pay attention. Are you destroying the building of your life, the building of your flesh, or is it decaying? Why? Through much slothfulness, the building decayeth. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. I've seen that demonstrated. People stop. You know, if you retire from your job, don't stop. Keep going. Find something to do. Plant a garden. Go for a walk every day. Get on your bicycle and ride. Find something to do with your hands and do it with your might until you're, the day you die. I'm going to work until I die. I've made up my mind. There's no retirement for me. I may retire for an hour here and there. You know, I may retire in the evening and relax because I should do that. I should rest. There is a time for rest and relaxation. The Almighty commands it, a day of rest. One in seven, the Sabbath day, rest. He thought it was a good thing. He thought we should do it. But you can't rest every day. Slothfulness, that's what it's called when you rest more than you should. Yes, get up and do something. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with thy might. And if you're, if you're sitting in a chair like I do, I sit in a chair a lot of hours, but I have to jump up. I just, I can't stand it. I got to get up and move, you know, as so I get out there and ride my bike. And I realize that I'm not getting enough upper body exercise to keep, you know, my muscles are shrinking. I got to find something to do with my upper body. So I'm going to do that. Yes, I need to do that because if I don't, the, the household, as it says here, the, uh, what are the words? Uh-huh. Through much softness. Oh, yes. The house droppeth through. <laughs> you know, apply that to your, your own body as well as the house you're living in. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands. Now, let's take that literally. The house droppeth through. Yes, the, are the muscles beginning to droop, you know? Yeah, we're well, continuing here with the preacher. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Curse not the king, no, not in thy thought. Curse not the rich in thy bedchamber, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which hath wings shall tell the batter. And uh, yes, why dwell on those things anyway? Is there not enough good to do in your life without cursing the rich or the king, which has no effect on the king or the rich, but only affects you? Mm -hmm. Let's continue on here. We have our, uh, we got through Ecclesiastes and we get to chapter 11 and verse 1. I think we're going to finish it up today. Cast thy bread upon the water upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. I love that song. Cast your bread upon the waters. There's several renditions of it, but it's, uh, it's great. You know, just keep sowing. Keep sowing seed. Keep casting your bread upon the water. 
that for thou shalt find it after many days. Don't be afraid to keep planting, to keep sowing, to keep giving. It will come back. You know, and there's always that treasure in heaven, you know, that we're going to reap one day and have that reward forever. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. Yes, plant, re sow, you know, keep giving. It'll come back and it'll come back when you need it. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow, and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. You know, it's just like year after year, I watch the farmers plant the hay. And some years, it, there's no rain. It just it doesn't grow at all. And like a year like this year, it didn't rain until this month. And so the hay started to grow. They're not going to have much. It may dry up. You just don't know. He said that he that regardeth the clouds and he that observeth the wind shall not sow. But he shall not reap. You never know what's going to be. Just keep reaping. Just keep sowing. And keep sowing and keep planting and keep giving. It'll come back to you eventually. We'll be back in a few minutes. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening to cross the border welcome back we're uh we're in ecclesiastes chapter 11 he that observeth the wind shall not sow and he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap you have to plant in faith in this life the farmer plants believing well even knowing that it may not rain but if it rains he'll have a crop and if it doesn't rain he won't have a crop if he doesn't sow, he will not have a crop at all. There's not even the chance that he'll have a crop. So he plants by faith, 
and he receives whatever comes and I've observed it year after year that's is the way of it in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thy hand for thou knowest not whether shall prosper either this or that or whether they both shall be a light good truly the light is sweet and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun but if a man live many years and rejoice in them all yet let him remember the days of darkness for they shall be many all that cometh is vanity yes we enjoy the good and we shun the evil we do good and shun evil in our life that that's it that's our portion under the sun if a man live many years and rejoice in them all yes yet let him remember the days of darkness for they shall be many all that cometh is vanity I find growth in the times of trial growth maturity rejoice O young man in thy youth let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes but know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment and there it is all these things everything that you do is a testimony to who you are watch judge yourself as a as a apostle put it in the New Testament that you judge yourself lest you be judged let that you be judged of no man you judge yourself you reprove yourself you correct yourself his Holy Spirit gives you the power to do that receive it learn obedience to the Almighty and be perfected by that knowing but that but know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth our vanity so many people hang on to sorrow I could I've had great loss in my life I've suffered loss in my life and sorrow is is appropriate for a short season when the loss is present but put it away remove it from your heart see it is there it will come there are times when sorrow is appropriate but the commandment here is to remove it let it go let it do its work in you but then let it go put away put away evil from thy flesh now let the Holy Spirit work in you I've determined you know the Messiah said that there's he called it people call it the unforgivable sin whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit there is no more forgiveness for him it shall not be forgiven I believe that's the way it's written in the authorized King James Version there whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit it shall not be forgiven what does that mean well let's examine what does the Holy Spirit do in us for us is it merely saying words as the fools and I've seen these fools on YouTube say words of blaspheming the Holy Spirit oh, make me cringe make me shudder but is that what it's all about can they not repent of their foolishness are they really blaspheming the Holy Spirit well yes has anybody shunned the Holy Spirit have you been disobedient has there been a time in your life when you where you would not allow the Holy Spirit to work because what is the first work of the Holy Spirit the first work of the Holy Spirit is to convict of sin that's right if you're convicted of sin the Holy Spirit his Holy Spirit has visited you and it's time to you for you to say the only prayer that the Heavenly Father hears from the wicked it says the, the prayer of the wicked is an abomination to the Almighty but there is one prayer that is not an abomination that the wicked can pray and that's the prayer of repentance teach me obedience I am sorry I've sinned I understand your law I understand and I don't want to do that anymore Wow suddenly you've been transformed you're no longer wicked you're righteous 
You've made a transformation. The Holy Spirit has convicted you of sin, and you've said a prayer of repentance. Now walk in it. Learn obedience. Put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Chapter 12 of Ecclesiastes Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. I've observed, you know, I came to Messiah in my youth at the age of 19, and I had a hard time of it too. I was uh, motherless and fatherless, living on the street, uh, basically having to do for myself. I was put in a Catholic home at one time. Then I was vetted out to foster homes and uh, good Catholic people. And there are good Catholic people out there, and I love them. And even though they're lost in a false religion, many of them, I, I actually believe that many of those who are Catholics will be saved because they're, they're walking in the integrity of their heart before the Messiah, and they have faith in him, and they're living their lives to please him. They just don't know all the, you know, they're ignorant Catholics. And, you know, God bless the ignorant Catholics. And I think that could even go for a Mormon or anyone who's in one of these false religions because I've learned something, that he judges the heart and the intent of the heart. But once they learn, they need to repent and come out of her. That's why he says, to come out of her, my people. See, they're in there. When he calls them to come out, they'll come out because they are his people. But I had a hard time of it. I had to learn obedience from scratch. I'd never read the book. I'd never had a demonstration in my life of someone who walked in righteousness and feared God and kept his commandments. Everything I learned was contrary up to that point in my life at 19 years old. It was a hard transformation, and it took a long time and hard lessons but I thank God, I thank the Almighty, my Heavenly Father, Yahuwah by name, for what he has done in teaching me lovingly, with so much patience, guiding me and keeping me in his kingdom, not letting me go. I don't know why. He adopted me. He took me on the hard case. I had no father. I had no mother. And he adopted me. He became my father. I am grateful. You know, and, I, and sometimes I just think they're there, but for the grace of God go I. When I see people lost in the world, in my youth, I turned to him and, and he honored that. He honored the prayers and the, the earnest prayers that I did pray. Even when I got lost, he drew me back because there were times when I got lost. I have to admit that. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And that's how a lot of people when they get when they get old, their flesh breaks down. And they go, wow, I have no pleasure in them. If you don't remember, it's going to be hard to remember your Creator then. If you can't, if you don't draw close to Him. That's why it's hard. It's rare for someone to, in their 50s, 60s, 70s to come to Messiah and, and to, to accept the faith. It's difficult. That's why he admonishes here. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh. You know, you draw near to the day of your death. When you say, I have no pleasure in them. I've got there yet where I can say I have no pleasure in them. I don't want to get there. I think there's enough wisdom in, his, in, the, in the scripture and in walking in wisdom and guiding my affairs and the way I eat and, the, and getting enough exercise. And there's plenty of wisdom out there in the world even to know that what you should and should not do with your flesh, and what chances you should and should not take. And, you know, just how much are those pleasures work, worth when you consider putting down the dainties, giving up things like bacon and sugary soda drinks that kill you and uh, all of the poisons and additives they give you that only do one thing, and that is cater to your appetite, period. And then the drugs that destroy your mind and your spirit and open you up to demonic influence. 
and the, and the cigarette smoke and, and all of those things that, that hook you and take you and snare you and trap you so that you can't even escape. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Remember now thy creator. I'm speaking to you young people out there in your, your teens, your 20s, your 30s. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. It will be more difficult if you get to 60, 70 years old and you haven't paid attention to him. You have not learned obedience to be led by his spirit. What, it's, it, it's almost, it's very unlikely. You know, it's like the rich man going through the uh, camel going through the eye of the needle. It's, ooh, maybe, maybe with all things God or with God, all things are possible, but many things are unlikely. You'll need a miracle to get a camel through the eye of a needle. But don't count on it. Don't be counting on it. Go, oh yeah, well, I'll get it together with God when I get 70. You may not see 70. You know, you may be 55 and still saying that. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets, when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of a bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. All is vanity. <sighs> beautiful, beautiful words. But dark, the poetry is just, I mean, it just, it, it overwhelms my soul just to read these words and the beautiful poetry and the wisdom in them. And fear shall be in the way, yeah, because man goeth to his long home, speaking of death, and mourners go about the street. He starts that out, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Live, enjoy the good of your labor, shun evil, because everything is being recorded and every moment of your life is a testimony to who you are, what you believe, whether you walk in faith or not, whether you regard your creator and his law or not, or whether you just choose to live and get away with whatever you can, whether you're deluded deceived or not your life is a testimony the dust returns to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto god who gave it yes from dust you came to dust you shall return vanity of vanity saith the preacher all is vanity and moreover ecclesiastes chapter 9 i mean chapter 12 verse 9 and moreover because the preacher was wise he still taught the people knowledge. He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd yes who is that one shepherd oh he's our almighty he's our heavenly father and he is the great shepherd 
and further by these, my son, be admonished. In making of many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. So we're to be admonished by these. We have the Proverbs written by the preacher here, the words of the wise, acceptable words, the words of truth. He said, And further by these, my son, be admonished. The making of many books there is no end, and of much study is a weariness of the flesh. I, I, I understand it. I study a lot. And it, it is weariness at times, but still, I dig in and I search it out. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, and this is it. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every secret thing. You have secrets? You think you can keep a secret from the Almighty? Well, you can't. Yes, there are some things. You know, even the even the wise man here wrote that uh, that love covers a multitude of sins, and uh, that some things should not be broadcast. And there are some things that you know you have done in your life, and I've done in my life. We're not proud of. There's no reason to broadcast them, but the Almighty knows about them. We've repented of them. We don't have to tell everything, but every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, he will bring it into judgment. See, even our good, I would rather have, you know, uh, more good secrets than evil secrets. We're commanded that we're to give our alms in secret. Mm. We're to give in secret. We're not supposed to broadcast the good that we do either. So every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil, shall be brought into judgment. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of man. That sums it up, the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh, how do I add to that? I don't. I can't. Cross the border. I'm not greater than my master. The, the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Father, he gave me this message some 15 years ago. And he gave me that phrase, cross the border into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, it's a kingdom. It has a border, you know, and it's not a border like the kingdoms of men out here or the kingdoms of the beasts, you know, that are run by men. No, it doesn't have a border. There's no gate. There's no crossing guards at the border. There's no checkpoints. You know, there are checkpoints in the spirit, though. Yeah, because you can cross it that fast. He said, cross, he said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. There's a clue how you cross the border into his kingdom. Repent. The kingdom is at hand. The Holy Spirit comes and he convicts you of sin. Repent. That's what he's calling you to do, to repent. You you feel guilty about something? Yeah, everybody feels guilty about something. Everybody is convicted by the Holy Spirit in their life. I don't care who you are or how mature you become. You're still going to have moments where you're convicted by the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do? Are you going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and ignore him? Or are you going to repent? And if you're in his kingdom, remain. And if you're not in his kingdom, repent and enter. Bring forth the works. Meet for repentance. Worthy of repentance. Good works. Obedience. The first work of obedience is repentance. You receive his law. You say, yes, your law is holy and just and good. Because we're convicted by the law of the Almighty. And something that he has written in all of us. Somehow we all have this in our conscience, but many allow their conscience to be seared. How does your conscience become seared? You keep ignoring the Holy Spirit and the conviction that he brings into your life. You keep ignoring it, and you don't acknowledge the Almighty and his law, his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, and you never enter his kingdom. Or you could enter his kingdom for a while, read the parable of the sower, but the Riches of this life, the pride of life, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of the flesh, they draw you back out, and you wither, and you die. 
the word that was planted in you. It withers and it dies. And next thing you know, you're out of his kingdom. You don't remember the border or the crossing guards, but you're out. That's it. It's just like, because it's a spiritual kingdom and the border is spiritual. That's right. There's the, the realm of darkness and there's the kingdom of light. If you hate the light, you don't come to the light because your deeds are evil. Read it there. in John 3, 16 to the end of the chapter. They don't come to the light because their deeds are evil. They hate the light. He didn't come to bring condemnation in the world. John 3, 16. Read it. Well, we're about running out of time. Not sure how much time I have here. A few minutes. Cross the border into the kingdom of heaven and live forever. Remain in his kingdom. Endure till the end and you shall be saved. That's the message. I'm not greater than my master. That's the message he preached. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. And so that's what I preach. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He, for he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. <laughs> Come to the light. Let your deeds be reproved. That is the work of repentance. But he that doeth truth, doeth truth, do the truth. He that doeth truth, come to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. You've been listening to Cross the Border. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone. Absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, -S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the third temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the third temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions, and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit Cross the Border dot org c r o s s cross the border dot org to get your print epub or pdf version of nicholas arthur's new book titled when the third temple is built that's cross the border dot org